Millennia has been out in the wild for a little while now, to mixed reception, around two thirds of players liking it, the others not so much. Some feedback very long form, others very brief. And of course, it's not alone. Good God, Humankind came out in 2021, what am I doing with my life? Anyway, there have been many mixed receptions to strategy games, especially in recent times. Victoria 3, another example. Stretching slightly further afield and into a place of great darkness, City Skylines 2, and in my humble opinion, basically anything that starts with total war. The next word probably doesn't tend to matter. In this video, we're going to take a look specifically at Millennia, how it launched, how other people other than me perceived it, and its future atomic ambitions. Let's jump in. So, two thirds of people like it, one third of people who bought it don't, and reviewed it as such. Now, of course, Steam metrics, I know, not a perfect measure, blah, 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 but they're one of the best public facing ones that we have. This video will be essentially divided into two parts. Firstly, looking at those reviews, but also more broadly about how the game has landed, the critiques, the problems. And then secondly, like I say, those ambitions for the future, the DLC. A lot of the positive reflections of the game broadly reflect the kind of things that I was discussing before it came out. If you like 4X games, you'll probably like this one. It could be slightly rough around the edges, some mechanics maybe need a little bit more work, but on balance, if you like it, with those few reservations in mind, you'll probably continue to enjoy it after the fact, after the purchase. If you like what you see, you'll probably like it after you buy it. And of course, there's a lot more nuance here. Uh, there aren't always just reviews that say, yes, it's great, or no, it sucks. And indeed, that review that I just showed you, I believe the most popular one, goes into a quite some lengthy detail about that, sharing some really good takes. Of course, as we read through these, we're not going to agree with them completely. You know, as I read through and see the person say that I'd appreciate uh, more nuance, uh, knowledge about how to upgrade wheat, wood, forests, sawmills, and then they go on to say that they only use engineering points for outposts. I can't help but feel that there could maybe be a bit of a discrepancy there. But putting those sort of personal opinions and play styles aside, on balance, positive reviewers tend to reflect on that sentiment. It's a pretty good 4X game. And if you're within the niche of playing 4X games, assuming more than just one, multiple games, I hasten to add, you're probably going to have a good time here. But in the same way that every future automaker copied Henry Ford, that familiarity with civilization, with the broader 4X historical genre, is also one of its weakest points, being accused of being a civilization ripoff and some fair criticisms around being able to not differentiate armies from their banners. The lack of multiplayer, something that rose up surprisingly. I thought it was only about 10% of players, not that we should ignore them, but it really is an issue. This player referring to it as a 1990s era play-by-play -play email implementation. I love the creative use of language there. Uh, another instance of creative language. Before anything, a public safety announcement this person says. If getting bashed on the head while having your kneecaps broken during an endless manhunt against you does not sound like fun, no judgment here, then for the love of all gods and drag... Okay, long story short, uh, game is too hard, lower difficulty is basically how we can surmise the feedback inside of this one. But I still like the creative wordplay. Uh, more specifically, perhaps, leaning into some things around the detail of the game instead of just glossing over it with words. Chaos mechanic, broken. And there's a deeper difficulty here. Players are finding it incredibly frustrating to deal with rebellions. Other aspects like religion and diplomacy are also often noted as being a little bit too shallow, something I tend to agree with. But back to those barbarians. You thought barbarians were a pain in the ass and sieve, think again. This player says they have a feeling all they're doing in the game is fighting barbarians and rebellions and it's ridiculous! And it certainly is intense in the early game. My kind of <laughs> sort of lackluster historical understanding is that probably back in these days force was important to keep out barbarians to keep people in line and i find just as a quick tip if you build one city watch and then have one warband or archer or whatever stationed in a city you will be able to defend it uh, at least in my personal experience that's the way that i've got around this fairly easy just don't leave the place completely unguarded the issue of vassals though, not your actual regions that you control, but the vassals rebelling randomly and having no way to stop it, does feel very frustrating. 
if you're running an empire with loads of vassals. Not something I overly tend to do because they don't really provide me that much, but that is, I believe, a fair criticism. And obviously, if players are feeling like they can't understand these mechanics, why are these things coming out of nowhere? How can I deal with it? Give me more options to deal with it. Then these criticisms will continue to remain valid and true. Other things such as the graphics, which I've made very clear in the past that are not necessarily my cup of tea, continue to be criticized in reviews. I don't quite get that because you must have known what the game looked like before you bought it. But if it's just one part of a broader criticism around a lack of balance, barbarians being too difficult, civs being too strong even on easier difficulties, then of course it's probably fair to include it there too. Now let's move away from the he said, she said, these are my feelings, those are your feelings part of the video and take a look at what the future holds for millennia because even at the game's release, like a lot of other strategy games these days, we were given a very good indication about that future or at least the first year. Before that though, I want to quickly highlight a wee update that the devs pumped out because there's some useful stuff to what we just talked about and what we're about to. I'll leave it up on your screen for about 10 seconds if you'd like to pause and read it yourself, but I'll be speaking to it. They say that in future, they're working on an update, a free update right now, and it'll include things like the ability to get rid of vassals, options for managing how the combat viewer presents combat differently, and updates that make unique capital buildings more interesting, and the innovations that come from those. Those were not items that were on a plan somewhere, those were things that they saw from player feedback. So they're working on stuff and we should expect some patches to come. They also talk a little bit about their DLC approach here, that most of the core features will be rolled out in free updates and the DLC will be used to accompany those new core features. And I'll return to this in just a moment. Firstly though, let's set the stage. So Millennia released, as you know, a couple of weeks ago at the time of recording, the base game for 40 US dollars. And there's also this premium version that gives you the expansion paths and Crucially inside of it, the first two DLC packs are included. Their dates might be subject to change though. I can't help but feel looking at the Steam page that one of them has already been pushed out to a following quarter. Nonetheless, we do have some detail and price points already. Now you'll have to forgive my use of country bumpkin dollars here, but essentially the two packs, Ancient Worlds, will be about 10 US dollars and then Atomic Ambitions, twice the price at around 20. US dollars, collectively putting them, well, you know, a little ways off, but not that far away from the full price of the game. Now, ancient worlds, maybe think humankind's Neolithic era, take control of your people before their first settlement, while they still wander as nomads. A new game start option, national spirit, economic good, and starting bonuses, and then atomic ambitions, perhaps a little bit more involved. Harness the power of the atom for all humankind. Fallout filled wasteland, two ages, a new spirit, and nuclear options for the strategic warfare system. The reason why they call it the strategic warfare system, as we just discussed, is because that system will be free, included in a free update. However, the atomic ambitions part of it doesn't seem like it will be. I mean, it won't be. It's a paid DLC. I think there'll be quite a bit of pressure on the team to nail this, because of course, Sid Meier's has ultimately set the precedent for 4X historical strategy games, and rightly or wrongly, players will tend to want them to fit into that mould. The precedent has long been set that nuclear weapons haven't been ring-fenced behind a paywall. Therefore, this one is going to be a little bit of a difficult balance, and potentially at some parts a hard sell. I think they need to lean into that core systems free, and then obviously for the rest, we'll have to wait and see. And speaking of those delays, two things that I think are quite important to update you on that will be free. The first one is multiplayer. What options are available? Well, it's the cloud hot seat option. You all have to meet together in a lobby to share the info. They say that simultaneous option, which is in the menu but is grayed out, is planned for the future. When will that future be? They say they don't have a specific time frame yet, but they're working on it and will share more when it's available as soon as the details have been worked out. In other words, no answer uh, to that question. In a slightly tangential one, but another, maybe not a massive part, but again a significant part. Just as multiplayer is significant, so too is modding. What's the deal with modding in Millennia? Is it available? 
At launch, it doesn't have direct modding support. They know it'll be important, they say. It's a high priority with integrated Steam Workshop support. Hallelujah! Will be coming sometime in 2024 this year. So not all that long to wait, hopefully. Uh, what extent will it be moddable though? Well, they say that most, if not all, of the content will be moddable once the support is available, though they're yet to determine the extent of UI modding that will be available when the modding first launches, at least. Couple of quick updates, multiplayer and modding, two parts that I thought were pretty important. And that basically brings us to the end of this video, a kind of a whirlwind look at Millennia's launch, its strengths, its failures as reported by the community, hopefully, and also what its future holds. One final note, when the game launched, I woke up in the morning, as you do, I checked my phone and I thought, I wonder how it's been received. Has my video matched general public reception? Or have I been way off? Do I think it's really much better than it is or much worse? And on balance, we seem to generally align the average public view and I. One thing that was quite interesting though, when I opened up that tab, Millennia had about 30% positive reviews. And talking with a few people in the community afterwards, I was told that it was even lower while I was still sleeping. Damn New Zealand time. It was down at about 12, 13%, then up to about 20, then at about 30. Horrifically negative. However, it seemed to be fairly short-lived, and I'm also told that of the people who played it, player retention was quite high. Now, obviously, the game has recovered to around 67% positive. Still more work to be done, of course. And as we've discussed, they do have plenty of work to do. I'll be sure to follow Millennia, at least the key updates moving forward on the channel, and I'd love to get a pulse check for how much more you'd like to see. However, it is a very busy time for strategy games coming up. Here's looking at you, Man of Lords. Probably some Frostpunk 2 as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.